We'll talk about where winners come from a little bit later on. So let's uh, take a look at the odds now. Let me pop that up. And you can see, of course, Scheffler. And this has pretty, been pretty much the deal this year. You got Scheffler as the top player. You got McElroy, the second guy. And then there's a, a gap. Um, and there you go, Hovland and, and, and the rest of them. It's the same old story with these players. Just uh, going over the odds here, let's see if I, I see anything uh, that sticks out to me. Let's see, Min Woo Lee, I believe, he's playing here uh, for the first time, I think. Uh, he's 35-1. to 1. Uh, Keegan Bradley's odds have dropped, which I was not happy about because I like him this week. He's down to 45-1. to 1. Uh, Wyndham Clark keeps getting good odds at 50 to 1. Uh, you got Thigala at 50, 55 to 1. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so those are uh, here, the two here. guys at the top. I've the two guys at the top I've noticed drifting, meaning you know their odds have been getting bigger. Are um, Max Homa and Justin Thomas? I think okay. Homa opened at like 20 to 1. He's 25 on DraftKings now. I think he's 30 on FanDuel. Um, but then Justin Thomas says his odds have gotten a bit bigger too, which, you know, jo Justin Thomas would be the ultimate if he ends up winning this week. Cause you know, everyone w was on him yeah. at, uh, Riviera and he was horrible. And, yes. You know, he comes, comes back this week and, and wins it. It would, uh, it'd be very fitting. Yeah. Screw you. <laughs> Screw you, buddy. All right. Uh, so, uh, if you had to take Scheffler or McElroy and, and again, it's very rare that either one of us will take single digit players, <laughs> yeah. but it's a signature event. A one and done. This this is the week where if you're going to take these guys, so it's a difference between picking them in our picks and one and dones. So let's just talk about both Scheffler McElroy. You got two, both of them have won this event before. This will be Scheffler's fourth appearance. This will be McElroy's tenth. He's never missed a cut. That's a good one and done um, uh, note there. N yeah. All nine of his results are in the top thirty. Eight of them are in the top fifteen. So. You know pretty much if you're going to take Rory McIlroy on one and done, you're going to get a pretty decent result this week. So that's the kind of reason why I think, you know, and you're getting a little bit better odds, that I, I, I'd take McIlroy over Sheffield this week. Yeah, if I was betting them, I'd take the extra, you know, two two points on, on Rory and take him at 8-5 to five over Sheffield or at 6-5. to five. One and done, I am pretty much deciding between these two guys. I'm, I'm burning one of these guys this week. And honestly, I might burn the other one next week at the Players. I might just have to decide, you know, which one I want where. Um, both guys have won here. Rory has a long history of being excellent here, which makes sense. It's a you know long golf course that's going to you know favor the bigger hitters, and then you know Scheffler has just been awesome here. The the one the one time he gained strokes putting, he won. Even last year, he lost quite a few strokes putting, still came fourth. So um, it's been an excellent spot. And you know, again, you factor in the big big prize pool, you know, tied for the second biggest. Uh, top prize we're going to get all season. I think it makes sense to, to use one of these big guys. All right. Then we've got that gap where we have Hovland at 14, Shoffley, Cantley at 16. So we got those three guys there. And uh, again, Cantley only played once. That was last year. Very impressive fourth. He's coming off his best finish of the year, the fourth at Genesis, even though that was a terrible way that he ended the weekend, including on Sunday when he was in firm control. Uh, you've got Shoffle, who's played here twice and has combined six over par. So this is not the week to take Xander Shoffle, even though he has four top tens out of five this year and a fourth at Genesis. Hovland, that's the guy that I would take out of the three. It's, it's not even close. Um, I was, uh, I, a matter of fact, uh, one and done. Uh, Hovland is somebody that I would consider. Uh, tenth last year, runner-up the year before that. That's a combined nine under par. And uh, the only thing I'm concerned with is he hasn't gotten off to a great start so far this year. His best finish was 19th at Genesis. Yeah, that, that's my concern with Hovland, too, and why I, I'm not going to take him in one and done. I mean, he's been excellent here, second place in 2022, 10th place in uh, 2023. I just, seems a bit off. I mean, he was, he, was, he was bad at Pebble Beach. He bounced back and finished 19th at Genesis. He did gain off the tee. And on approach, the the, sh the short game is what worries me, and the short game is important here. You're, you're going to miss greens, you know. You're going to have some tough up and downs. His short game is kind of um, reverted to you know 2021, 2022 two form, or you know that was the, a weak part of his game. So that's my only potential knock on Havlin. I wouldn't bet him at 14 to one. I think um, I'm going to save him, save him in one and done for hopefully a spot where he's you know kind of playing better heading into the event. 
Yeah, and uh, let's again. We we, we got to bring this up because this is just it's it's getting crazy. But eight events right now on the PGA Tour this year. The average opening odds per winner is a hundred and fifty-six to one. Uh, Ekro is now the let's see one two three four fifth out of eight winners this year with odds of a hundred to one or more. And I think the I think the lowest odds to win so far was Jake Knapp, right? Yep, Jake <laughs> Knapp J- exactly is the lowest at forty to one, and then the other two. The 60 to 1 shots, Clark and Matsuyama both needed to tie or break course records to win and that did it at 60 to 1. I don't, mean, don't feel bad if you don't feel bad if you hadn't haven't hit a winner yet this yeah. year. It's been tough. So the question is is when will that come to an end? Will it be something that will be a big deal all, all season that, yes, yeah, eventually, of course, these guys are going to win, but still, is this going to be like a long shot season in general? Or once one of these favorites win, does that then go back on a, on a completely different trend and we start we see all the top guys winning again? So we'll see, but uh, one of these weeks is going to change and uh, nobody's ever won yet. Well, nobody's yet to win this season with odds of less. Then 40 to 1. Okay, next up, uh, we have uh, Ludwig at 18 to 1. Uh, Spieth, Burns, Morikawa, 20, 22 to 1. And here we go with picks because I have as my top two picks Jordan Spieth and Sam Burns. Mm. And uh, Spieth has only played here twice. He's finished fourth in both, uh, in both uh, appearances, combined 13 under par. Don't forget that even though he uh, he was DQ'd out of Genesis, he was still only two strokes behind eventual winner Matsuyama going into the weekend. He had a 66 in his first round. He was sixth at Phoenix uh, and also third at Century. So he's off to a pretty decent start. And then Burns, he's only had one top 10 here, and I get that. But he's, on, he's really playing better than I think we've ever seen him play in a stretch now of four consecutive top 10s, 10th at Genesis, 10th at Pebble. And more important, uh, doing some uh, more research on this, this is a really good and, – and a good – Burns could be my uh, one-and-done pick too. This is this is the type of week that you want to take Sam Burns because if you look at it, he's a Louisiana native, went to LSU. He's got five PGA wins, two of them at Valspar, and uh, that, that's two wins in Florida. He's won twice in Texas. He won in Mississippi. He's had strong results in Texas and Tennessee. And so he definitely does his best in the South and the Southwest. And even in his lone Corn Ferry win, he did it in Georgia. So uh, throw in the fact that four of his five wins on the PJ Tour have come between March and May. So this is the perfect time if you're thinking of taking Sam Burns to take him. And as I referenced before, both Burns and Spieth are on uh, are are high on uh, on that list uh, that you put together uh, for Bermuda. Yeah, they call him Bermuda Burns, so you know that you definitely want to win in Florida. He is he is second on our list um, of top Bermuda players. You know, short short game on Bermuda. Um, and I was surprised by this too. As part of my model this week, I did factor in how these guys have done on long difficult scoring golf courses over the last two years which i expect this to be bay hills definitely a long course i expect it to be difficult scoring sam burns is third on that list i usually think of him as a guy that does better in you know birdie fests but yeah that's over the surprising. last few years over the last two years he's he's been good on tough courses it's um sammy pulled up scott yeah scotty shuffler one max homa two sam burns three for your three best players on tough golf courses. So Bert Burns was one of the last two guys off my betting card this week. Excellent. All right. Uh, moving on over now, we've got uh, Fleetwood Homa Young at 25 to 1. And we start with uh, one of your picks, Max Homa. Uh, and um, Homa, uh, if, if you look overall, he's been uh, solid in all four of appearances here including a 10th place finish three years ago, all of them in the top 25. 
Now, he hasn't been playing top 10 or top 5 golf yet, but he does have three top 20s out of his five, 16th at Genesis. Yeah, I think the fact that he's been just okay so far this season is the reason he's 25 to 1. And yep, to me, like Max Homa, 25 to 1 is approaching just like auto bat territory. The guy just wins enough where, you know, if I see Homa 25, I'm probably just going to bet him. The fact that he has been so good here only makes it an easier bet for me. And I, he's really, Homa's really been even better at Bay Hill than it looks like based on his finishes because he's lost strokes putting each of the last two times here. He was fourth best in the field in strokes gain approach in 2022. He led the field in strokes gain approach in 2023. So if he can do that again and putt well, as he usually does, you know, he, he can definitely win here. And again, last point on Homa, as I said, he is uh, second on that list of, you know, best players on tough golf courses. I want Homa on a course where the wing score is going to be, you know, 10, 10, 12, to, uh, you know, 10 or 12 under. Cause that's, you know, if you look at his history, those are the type of, of tournaments that he, he's often won. Does he have problems on Bermuda? No. Uh, so let's see. He is – let me pull up where he is. He's not as good on Bermuda as he is on uh, POA. But in this field, he's 24th on that list of um, best short game on Bermuda. So, you know, 24 okay. out of – I think there's there's like 70 players in this field. So it's not, it's not his best surface, but he is still a positive Bermuda player. Uh, Young uh, has uh, – similar to Homa. He's played here twice – both top 15s, 10th last year at 5-under. He's off to a nice start with four top 20s out of five uh, worldwide, 16th at Genesis, 4th last week, and then also Fleetwood at 25-1. to one. And I kind of came close to think to take a Fleetwood, but the problem to me was I don't think he should be 25-1. to one. I think he, exactly. looking at these players that he's ahead of, he should be 30-1, to one. Um, maybe even 35-1, to one because he hasn't won yet in the u.s for a particular reason and i know he just won at dubai uh whatever in january but that's dubai he has to do this big time and i think he'll be competitive this week but can he close the deal yeah i think fleetwood and cam younger like you said five to ten points shorter than they should be i just it's a perfect course fit for cam young and he's played well here i i can't bet him at 25 to one just what I've seen from him when he's in contention on Sundays. Um, I think Cam Young even opened it like 35 to one. He was on my initial list of potential bats, but he, he's been a popular bet this yeah. week. Yeah, and you know, for good reason. Again, he's played well here and he's he, he should play well here because because he is such a great driver of the golf ball. I think he'll I think he'll play well. I think he'll he's probably a good top ten bet, but um I, I don't trust him enough to close the deal to, to bet Cam Young at twenty five to one. All right, and now we've got the next threesome, Zella Torres, Fitzpatrick, and JT. You mentioned JT, by the way. Another reason why not just is he coming in off of a bad week, but, again, I think there might be an excuse, the, two, the excuses we came up with. One, he just never seems to be good on his third week. Mm -hmm. And two, maybe most importantly, he was paired up with Tiger. So, probably, matter of fact, even Jan said that she would never bet anybody anybody she doesn't care if they're friends with him or not she would never bet anybody that's playing with tiger in the first two rounds and she would never bet anybody that's playing in the grouping before tiger in the last two in, in the first two rounds she would never touch any of it she has way too much crap going on with those two uh with the distractions going on for those uh, uh players those whatever five additional players that have to deal with all the madness surrounding tiger um, so, but Thomas has only played here twice. 21st last year is not bad for his mm. second showing. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe like you said, maybe he could, now, now, nobody's looking at him. He's 28 to one. If, if he had played well and had a top 10 at Genesis, he'd probably be 18 to one or 16 yeah. to one. So maybe you're getting a bargain here with Justin Thomas. And then the other two players are our picks. You have Zalatoris. I have Fitzpatrick. I definitely would have taken Zalatoris as well. I know he hasn't played particularly well here. He has one good uh, showing, and he's kind of trended the wrong direction. Obviously, you and I don't care about that because the <laughs> fact that he has a top 10 here shows he can play the golf course. The guy is on fire right now. We're still getting decent odds with him at 28-1. to 1. Um, and his last place, his last finish was that second at Genesis. He would have won if it wasn't for Matsuyama's you know, crazy day. And then um, Fitzpatrick, meanwhile... Uh, six top 15s out of nine. Four of those top 10s, the runner-up in 2019. Last five years on this golf course, 
14th, 9th, 10th, 9th, and 2nd. So I think Fitzpatrick is a really solid play. I like the fact that both of these guys, matter of fact, even Justin Thomas, they're all 28 to 1. Yeah, and Fitz, um, you know, Fitz that Euro mold, good in the wind, good when conditions get tough. So you know, I think this this is a good golf course for him as, as he's shown over the past few years. Yet, Zal Torres, not surprisingly, the reason he hasn't, you know, he's only had the one high finish at Bay Hill is because he's struggled putting. He, he's lost strokes putting in all three appearances, but he's come top 30 in the field in tee to green in all um, three of his appearances here, including uh, fifth place in the year he came 10th. So, again, I think ball striking wise, he should be at the top of the field. We just need him to roll in some putts. And I do think the putter has looked better. Um, since, oh, it has. We looked at it last this. week. Statistically speaking, oh, he's okay. actually playing really well. He's like in the top 30. Yeah right now and in, exactly. in, in I think putting. I think he's driving the ball really well too. I've been impressed with the driving. I think he's almost taken a little bit off of the driver just you know from watching him. I know we I know we had to change his swing. Yeah, that's right. Game, yes. I feel like he's driving it more accurately, which I definitely like at Bay Hill. And then again, just you know, I say this all the time about Sal Torres, the harder the event, the more I like him. Look through his history, you know, he's been the best at events that have played tough. If you, we do look at those um, difficult scoring long golf courses over the last couple of years. He's 10th best in this field. So the tougher, tougher it plays, the more I like Willie Z. All right. Uh, next up, uh, let's go with uh, Day Minwoo Lee at 35 to 1. And then you have Matsuyama at 40 to 1. Uh, no way, Matsuyama. He's not winning twice already this season. So I'm going to scratch him out. But if you like him, if you took him when he won and you just want to roll with him, he has made eight out of nine cuts here. Just one top ten, though. And he missed the cut last year. Now, Minwoo uh, had a really good show in last week, a couple of days ago, of course, uh, or yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to close the deal. Uh, this will be his third appearance, and he's missed the cut, I believe, both times, if I'm correct. Um, so that's obviously not a good thing. Um, so I just don't think this would be the week to take a player on a, on a really tough golf course who's never made the cut when you have so many other options to choose from. And then also Jason Day, that's the guy I'd go with uh, in this group. I don't even, you know, who cares that he's won before? We've already uh, mentioned that that's uh, probably a good thing. Uh, if you take a look at Day, uh, half of his appearances here are top 25. He's got the win in 2016. And more importantly, he's got three top 10s out of five this year. And he was ninth at Genesis, uh, one of the uh, uh, signature events, and sixth at Pebble in the other. Yeah, Day's definitely the, the one I'd bet among this trio if I was going to bet one of them. He he has gained strokes off the tee every single time he's played the API. He consistently gained strokes around the green and putting. It's just like if he can have a good iron week at this course, he's he's going to top 10. So um, you know, 35 is a bit short for me, but I think he's he's a okay bet at that number. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's uh, he he barely missed out on my list. Uh, he, I was going to put him on my list. He just didn't make it, but um, I'll definitely bet him this week. All right, Bradley on Scott at forty five to one, and uh, Bradley. Look, I, I liked him a lot at sixty five to one. Now he's down to forty five to one. He's still making my list. I'll put ten bucks on him out, out, out of my money this week because I was going to bet him anyway. But I don't like the drop from sixty-five to forty-five, and the reason that maybe people are betting him, he's made eleven of twelve cuts here, five of those top fifteens, runner-up in two thousand fourteen, and the last three years he's finished tenth, eleventh, and tenth. Um, he did miss the cut at Genesis though, but it was eleventh at Pebble, and of course he uh, lost in that playoff at Sony. Uh, early on this season so uh and with bradley similar to zelatoris you know bradley it's about making sure his putting um yep. is good and he has been better of course at putting lately uh scott's the other guy that i would take a look at here because he's playing so well he just continues to play well i just don't know if, if, if i'm gonna risk him winning he's never won here before uh he does have a couple of top fives but he's got seven straight top 20s worldwide and that includes top 20s at genesis and pebble yeah, I like the Keegan bat. He's interesting because, you know, for one, kind of for, for me, like Zal Torres and a lot of these other top end players, um, the tougher the golf course, the better Keegan tends tends to do. Um, the other thing with Keegan, it's, it's, it's funny. He's actually a bad Bermuda player in general. Um, he's 42nd on my list of, you know, Bermuda short game. But for whatever reason, he's been really good here. Um, 
He's gained strokes around the green in all but three appearances. He's gained strokes putting in more than half of his appearances at the API. So something about you know these greens, he um, he, he seems to have figured out. All right. Next up, we've got Clark, Tom Kim, Russell Henley, Harris English, Corey Connors at fifty to one. As far as that group there, English is the one that would intrigue me. He had the runner-up finish last year here. He does have six top 30s out of 11 appearances, and he's trending in the right direction with back-to-back top 20s and a seventh at Genesis. Uh, who do you like in this group? It would have to be Wyndham Clark for me. I don't understand why he's always priced the way he <laughs> is for a guy that's you know won um, you know, multiple big events over the last 12 months now. Um, you know, he... He's always tempting for me because I think Wyndham Clark should be at least, you know, 35 to one, you know, put up, put him with Jason day or that at least yes. at minimum. Um, and you know, he Clark has not been good here, which would, you know, be the, the reason to not bet him. But again, as we said, you know, I think he's, he's just a better player um, now than he was, you know, even, even when he came here last year and last year, you know, was his, his best showing came 34th actually had a really good approach. Um, tournament at API last year. So it would definitely be Clark if I was betting one of these 50s. And I do think he, you know, based on what we've seen from Winnick Clark, if you just bet him every week at 50 to 1, hey, or whatever he is, he'll make he's, out. He's, he's, yeah, he's going he's gonna to make you money. Uh, yeah, because he has improved all three of his appearances 20 over in his first, 6 over oh. in his second, he even. Was 20 over? Yes, 20 over. <laughs> in his... two rounds? Yeah. Uh, no, he, in uh, four rounds. Okay, that, yeah. that makes more sense. He made yeah. a cut. He, he missed the cut. No, yeah, because he was improving each time from uh, from uh, uh, par 20, then to 6, then to even par uh, last year. Okay, then we've got 55. We've got M, who's been struggling. I don't think we've seen M struggle like this before. So he's in a big struggle right now. The gal is at 55 to 1. Knapp and Kirk are at 55 to 1. And... Uh, as far, uh, you know what, I haven't even, let me, while I'm talking, because I haven't posted our picks, so here, here's here's the picks, so there you can see, and I'm posting them at the right time too, because we have our final players on the list. You're taking Thagala, I'm taking Jake Knapp, baby. Yes, wow. I know he's already won, but this guy wow. is just on fire right now. Confidence is through the roof. And uh, you're getting 55 to one. I know, you know, it's, it, you might think, well, he's in a number with a lot of other players, but who cares? I mean, it's all about two things. One course history. If that's not your hot, somebody, you know, horse for courses kind of deal. That's one big thing. The other is more important is how you're playing. I don't think anybody's got more confidence on tour right now than Jake Knapp. And that's why I'm taking him again this week. But uh, the gala is going to be uh, one of yours. Your, your top long shot pick. He went from a miscut plus eight in 2022 to a 14th four under par last year. Uh, he does have two top fives this year, fifth at Phoenix and runner up at Century. Yeah, and Sahith coming off a 37th at Genesis, which I kind of like because you look through his results, this guy never strings together like two high finishes in a row. You know, he is all over the map, which and we've talked about we like from an outright perspective. We want guys that are either going to, you know, be in the mix or missing the cut or finishing, you know, outside the top 40 or whatever. That's kind of the golfer that the gal is at this point of his career, at least. Another guy, Sahith, I like him at these tougher events. You even just look at some of the, you know, top fives he's had over the last couple of years. He's finished top five at Waste Management twice you know including when it was an elevated event a couple years ago he's finished top five at farmers top five at heritage last year when it was an elevated event top five at uh, memorial one of the toughest courses on tour so i like him at these spots where you know his short game kind of comes into play more as you said 14th here last year and sahith kind of surprised me i didn't even realize this he's sixth best on that uh bermuda short game list we looked at he's a really good bermuda player um so i think this should be a good spot for him and it's just it's another number bet for me like i think betting sit the gala at 55 to 1 for the next couple of years i think that that'd be profitable in the long run yeah he'll uh he'll, he'll have another win and his next step is getting it done uh during uh, the meaty part of the season okay uh then you have this is not the week by the way to take shane lowry uh, last week would have been the week, and it looked like Shane Lowry because we've talked about Lowry before uh, being a big Honda Classic guy, and I would have felt like if I would have taken him last week, boy, I've got this one. 
this is it. He's going to do it. And then he just completely yeah. crapped out again. Uh, yep. I don't know what's the deal there, but he's only made one of five cuts here. And that was the 67th last year. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, his odds dropped. So, okay, if you want to take the chance with Shane Lowry this week, you're throwing money away. Um, Hadwin, Van Royen are also 60 to 1. And I picked Van Royen up in our fantasy league because I think that there is something in his game uh, that yeah. uh, has completely changed. And I think he's now uh, putting himself in position to be a really solid player. Um, and he's starting to play better as well overall. So he's interesting. And Hadwin also may not, may not be a bad uh, long shot idea. He was sixth. Uh, in one of his finishes and he's got four top 15s in his last seven on the season um uh, and uh fourth at genesis so um uh, hadwin's not a totally bad idea Ho- hoagie would be my guy from this list right here 70 his to one iron, yeah his irons are on fire um he has gained 3.7 or more strokes on approach in four straight events now kind of a mixed bag at, at api here but he does have a 15th place finish back in 2020 came 32nd in 2022 and as we said in that um at, at the start of the show proximity from 200 plus yards last 12 months tom hoagie the best player in this field so you know he's not the longest hitter off the tee but he gets it done with those long irons all right tom hoagie hey why not put a couple of bucks on him he's 70 to one it's a big number uh, post on, uh, by the way, is also in the and Cole seventy five to one. A lot of upset uh, one and dunners last week taking Cole, and uh, I mean I, we're not in any better shape. I mean I went with Rose and he was a disaster, but at least he made the cut. Uh, but Cole, wow! I mean he, I, I was really close to taking him, and a lot of people did, and he was just was a disaster last week. So we'll see how he rebounds this week. Uh, he was eight over par, missing the cut last year here in his only appearance. Uh, Post on, meanwhile, has a combined 23 over par here in two appearances. Yeah, from from this spot, um, I think Hoygaard sticks out to me as just a, a talent play. Yeah, he, he's, like, he, yeah, he, he was uh, 60 to 1, wasn't he? Now he's 80 to 1. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard any talk on Hoygaard. Um, I'm not sure has he has he played here before. You know, yes, I, I don't. There's there's nothing in the numbers I can point to with him, but I, I do think he's just a better player than these other you know 80 to ones that he's listed by. So if you wanted to you know just take a flyer on a, a big talent, I think Hoygaard makes some sense. Yeah, he was four over par, missing the cut in 2022. He's trending in the wrong direction, so uh, you know that's one thing. Jaeger, meanwhile, he's missed two two cuts in his last three. He was the non-cut yeah. guy for a long time but now he's starting to miss cuts but when he's not missing cuts he's, he's actually i think he's got two top fives in in, in there so uh yep. keep that in mind also uh matthew pavon jan picked uh, pavon up on her fantasy team this week uh so she's going with pavon who's already won of course this year uh bazoot bazoot is somebody that i think is another good long shot play because he has a pretty good uh, history here at this golf course. He's played it four times. He's been in the top 23 of those, including one top 10. Um, and by the way, he's coming off a miscut. Uh, and, and don't worry about that because uh, when he when he uh, finished second at the John Deere in 2022, he's coming off a miscut. So I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, some other long shots I'm, I I would keep an eye on. Ricky starting to look like he's close to maybe getting out, but this is not a great venue for him. But again, you're getting 90 to one with Ricky. Our boy Luke List is also maybe a potential mm-hmm. long shot play at 90 to one as well. What about you? So I actually bet. Emiliano Grillo at 120 to one when the ads first came out on Monday morning. He's down to 80 to one now, so I, I wouldn't recommend him as a play at 80. He didn't, you know, make my official card for the show, but th- so he, he's playing reasonably well so far. He hasn't missed a cut so far this season. He's kind of played steady golf. Last year, Grillo finished 39th at the API. He led the field in strokes gained T to green. He lost nine strokes putting. Now I remember. Luke List was in a very similar spot at uh, at uh, Genesis last year, where I remember looking at the numbers and like he had had this unbelievable tee to green performance at at the Genesis in, in 2022 and horrible putting, and then or sorry 2023, and then look what happens in, in 2024. That's right. He's in the right in the mix on Sunday, so I'm kind of hoping to capture uh, something similar with Grio this week. If he can have the same type of ball strike performance and actually not be a disaster putting, um, I, I think he he could be in the mix. 
Yeah, uh, Ricky, by the way, he's made 11 of 12 cuts at this golf tournament, but just one top five. Still, you're at 90 to 1. And list, three top 20s out of six uh, with two top 10s. That's not bad uh, on a tough golf course like this. But, but here's the strange thing. His first three appearances, 18 under par combined. His last three appearances, 21 over par. Uh, something's, you know, who knows? But, you know, sometimes you change something in your game and all of a sudden golf courses yeah. tend to uh, go the other way as well. Um, and then Grillo, four top 30s in six appearances with one top 10. So not just last year, he does have a history of playing pretty well at uh, Bay Hill. And I don't really... Yeah, and again, that's, gonna, that's, that's been a lot of ball striking stuff for Grillo. He hasn't putted well here. In, in general, and especially last year, obviously, um, but the the tee to green stuff, the the approach play, especially, has been for whatever reason really good at this course. Um, to note, as far as any other players, just taking a look, Chris Kirk, six top twenties out of eleven. Uh, let's see, uh, Corey Connors has finished in the top twenty five three straight years with a third place finish in twenty twenty one, but he hasn't had a top five since the Texas Open win uh, last year. And uh, Justin Rose has eight top 25s out of 18, three top fives and a runner-up. But his last five years, two missed cuts, excuse me, three missed cuts, a WD when he was five under par, and a 63rd. So he hasn't played well here lately. Um, and uh, he did not play all that well last week either, even though he made the cut. So I think that's it because, again, this is not the, the event that you want to be taking super long shots. So... No, the, uh, the the streak's gonna end this week. We're gonna get a we're gonna get a winner, you know, thirty five to one or lower. There you go. See Zella Torres and uh, was thirty five to one before the odds dropped. Um, yep. Just quickly on the uh, where winners come from. Uh, once again, not a come from behind event, so you want to get your money early. The, but the last fifteen winners started inside the top twenty five after the first round. Okay, so you do not want to be outside the top twenty five, but. Only one first-round leader during that spell, and that was Jason Day in 2016. Uh, Kitty Amis started second after the first round last year. Uh, after round two, 13 of 15 started the weekend in the top 10. And going into the final round, 25 of the last 26 winners started the final round in the top four. Francisco oh. Molinari started 17th in 2019 five strokes back the only one uh, out of that uh, list that did not uh follow the top four trend and the farthest back a winner has started and won after the third round was six shots back it's been done twice but not since 1984 so you definitely want to make sure that look take a look at maybe that top 25 uh results after the first round make your decisions there because you're not going to get great odds going into that top 10 into the weekend. But, yeah, first round, top 25, see what you got. And uh, see if you got some players that are still getting good uh, odds if uh, you haven't already yeah. taken them. Yeah, I'd say uh, the last thing, too, I'd say keep an eye on the wind, too, you know, as we get into, to like, you know, Wednesday night. And then if you're doing any, you know, in tournament betting, keep an eye on the wind because that, you know, that can play a, a huge factor at this golf course. And that's, uh, what is that, Orlando? Orlando, yeah. Uh, let's see how Orlando is going to be. Let's see. Orlando. Oh, one and done. As I'm looking for the weather, so I'm down to um, my 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 six is down to four, and uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to go with Spieth or Day, um, but my final four. Uh, believe it or not, Nap is in my final four. Because I'm like, you know what? Wow. Maybe if I do him and he were to actually do something crazy, nobody else is going to take him. So, yep. um, but the the top three that are more more probably a way I'm going to go: Burns, Zalatoris, and Fitzpatrick. So those are my one and okay. dones. Yeah, I'm I'm very likely going either Scheffler or Rory. Um, if if you want, if you wanted me to give you a third, it'd be someone we didn't even really talk about. It'd be uh, Oberg. Who I think is just an awesome fit for this course. Um, I could I could definitely see him, and he even played here last year and played pretty well, you know, considering how inexperienced he was at that point. So that's right, he did. He, he was twenty fourth last year. Yeah, yep. that's right. Usually yep. he doesn't play events. Uh, it'll okay. be the first time, but not 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 so much. Yep. Okay, so the weather. Uh, taking a look, 
we have uh, the winds will be picking up on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The weekend winds are 14 miles an hour. So it doesn't look like we're going to have much rain, but um, it looks like most of the wind on Saturday is in the early, is going to be earlier in the day. But again, that could be still for the entire round. So you just want to definitely both both days that if there's going to be wind, it's going to be earlier in the day. And uh, you just, but like you said, t take a look at when, because sometimes, yep. you know, there could be a five, five mile an hour difference as far as the wind, exactly. um, as you said. And it is going to start getting warm, too, because uh, taking a look at the uh, just taking a look at the, at the weather, you're going to go from uh, 83 on Friday to 87 on Saturday. Ooh. We're 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 still at early March and it's 87 degrees. <laughs> It'll cool off on Sunday, but that's going to be a brutal day uh, for the players who aren't probably used to the weather at this point in the season. So that's going to wrap it up. Uh, the players next week. Wow, I know it's a signature event, but you know it's we don't need anybody to tell us it's a signature event. Um, it's like a major, so. And by and it's a very hard event to handicap because yes. hard you you get maybe one or two players that have had nice runs at players, ninety eight percent of the of the of the players there up and down miscuts and and top fives and you just never know when a player is going to play well there. Yep, this week is a course history week. Next week is not a course history week. Um, but man, the, the the players is awesome. That back nine is so, there. So much that can happen on that back nine. It's a great great event to watch and bet on but another event that'll have a lot to do with wind and weather yep. so all, right, all these all these florida courses yes yep. yes that's what makes them fun so yep. uh be alert check us out on discord if you have any questions during the event that's the best way of reaching us we'll do that as well if we have any updated picks or information we want to share with you we have a link in the description area for that um and that's going to wrap it up we'll be back for the players preview next week don't forget jan is going to be at the valspar event the week after the players so we're going to hook up there at some point and do some cool stuff and then much more including jan being at augusta for the masters we're going to find out about uh hooking up with her while she's there as well so jared uh enjoy the golf this week uh good to have you back good to be back greg good luck enjoy api yes absolutely see everybody next week don't forget to subscribe.